Mike Grizzo decided not to trade away Kyle Finnegan and as well as Lane Thomas. So now let's flip the page from them being trade assets to now being building blocks of the future. Let's talk about that. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you can win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast locked on nationals as part of the locked on Na- locked on podcast network where you get your team every single day later on in today's program let's talk about it being a mckenzie gore day we always love mckenzie gore so we're going to discuss his start against the milwaukee brewers for a little day baseball which you can always catch on sirius xm and as well as the sxm app just search nationals there Youth movement, starting over at third base. You got Jake Alou, and you also got another guy who I don't think people should forget about as he could be making his trip up to the major leagues anytime this season. I'll discuss that a little bit later on. But let's talk about Mike Rizzo deciding to stay put at this Nationals deadline and only deciding to trade away J. Mayor Candelaria, which I talked about that on yesterday's show is the right decision. That's what that signing in this offseason was for, to trade him at the deadline, hopefully to get a few prospects that were good. Mike Rizzo, he did that. He did his job. But now let's talk about Lane Thomas, because Lane Thomas was kind of the one that a lot of Nationals fans were divisive on, to say the least. A lot of people thought that Lane Thomas was a building block. And at one point in time, I actually looked at Lane Thomas as a building block as well, just from the simple fact that he was exceeding his expectations in the major leagues. And I also look back at that deadline. When you are shopping, just in general, it could be at the grocery store or it could be at Marshall's, whatever it may be. When you are looking at that clearance rack and you have something that you always wanted, you always wanted that particular shirt, whatever it may be. You go to that clearance rack, compare it to the other retail racks that are just not on sale. It's not in the clearance rack. It's going for retail price. You go to that clearance rack hoping to get the bargain to make that void of that shirt that you wanted in the retail side of things. That was Lane Thomas for this Nationals team. They found him on the clearance rack when they traded away John Lester. They got back Lane Thomas in return, and all he has done has been a very good National here in his time. Only two and a half years, really, at this moment. Lane Thomas has always been a good player. He's always been considered a utility outfielder kind of guy, a fourth outfielder depth, you could say. Over the last two years, he's been starting regularly, and in this season, he really took off, and as we've covered plenty of times, he should have been an all-star. And at at that moment, I even thought Lane Thomas was one of the biggest snubs as far as major leaguers go. I truly do mean that. But now Mike Rizzo has kind of stuck his flag in the ground, you could say. And he has made Lane Thomas, and he made it known to the rest of the GMs out there that if you're thinking of training for Lane Thomas as a fourth outfielder type coming off the bench, we're not going to be taking your call because we view him completely different. And Mike Rizzo did go on today with the sports junkies on 106.7 The Fan, and this is what he had to say about Lane Thomas. I think he's a late bloomer. He's just coming into his own. His arrow is still pointing north, and it didn't reach the threshold that we wanted for Lane when regarding a trade. There were teams calling about him as we all expected because Lane Thomas, he's under control for the next two and a half years, similar to Juan Soto last year. So his price tag was obviously kind of at the peak, you could say, of his career as a national. He also said that he's taken a leadership role in the outfield. In my opinion, you can't just throw all 22 to 23-year-old players on the field. That part is true. I do agree with that. 
Now, while I would build my team a little bit differently, Mike Rizzo is a proven GM here. He knows what he's doing as far as bringing up prospects a little too early as James Wood is still in AA Harrisburg and hasn't gotten that call up to AAA. That doesn't really mean anything in this conversation, but we all know the speculation is that we do believe James Wood could be making his Nationals debut at some point this season. But Mike Rizzo decided to not trade away Lane Thomas. And what does that tell me? I think it tells me that he actually does believe Lane Thomas has the chance to take over as an everyday player. Now, will that ever come to fruition? And would I have done that? Would I have banked on the possibility of Lane Thomas, of being that clearance rack option and having him fulfill your normal retail kind of shirt, your normal high value outfielder that you would spend on in free agency or you spend a first round pick on as we have plenty of those down in the minor leagues at this moment in time. I would have traded Lane Thomas for the right price. Now, whatever the right price in Mike Rizzo's mind could be completely different from what I have thought. Because I never thought that you'd be getting a big time prospect for Lane Thomas. But I also think he's worked his way in the possibility of getting a bottom tier top 100 prospect, a top 10 prospect in a good system. I think that's the kind of prospect that we could have gotten in return for a Lane Thomas. And if it really just all depends on the team that is interested in Lane as to what I would have done. Because if it's a team like the Houston Astros, now while we did see they basically trade away their two top prospects for Justin Verlander yesterday, which was kind of a show, which really a show to be honest, it sucks for us because the Mets got two good prospects in return for that. But I don't think a team would have done that for a Lane Thomas type, especially a team like the Astros. I was just kind of throwing them out there as to kind of get a little gauge on what they could be. Because they're one of the bottom farm systems in all of baseball at this moment in time. They are. They got Drew Gilbert. He's good. But also Ryan Clifford. They're probably their two best prospects in that system in my mind. So going forward, you have to ask yourself this. If he were not to met that price tag, whatever it is in Mike Rizzo's mind, then what is the price tag? Because in my mind, I couldn't imagine that Mike Rizzo would be looking at a package of like multiple top 100 prospects. I just can't believe that. I think Mike Rizzo knows that that would never be the case for Lane Thomas. Maybe you could bake on the possibility of getting a back-end top 100 prospect kind of guy later on. But I don't think a team really views that for Lane Thomas. I don't think a team would give that up for a Lane Thomas because we know the metrics. They've all kind of indicated that he has been lucky this season. But he's also been good, and he's been productive, and he has been a really good defender, one of the best in the National League so far this season as far as right fielders go. So if the price tag wasn't met for Mike Rizzo, I'll trust in that. I will trust in that ability that you really think Lane Thomas is going to be an everyday outfielder. So let's see it. Let's see it. And then on the other hand, you decide to keep a Kyle Finnegan. Which in my mind, that is where I kind of have an issue with. I don't really see Kyle Finnegan as someone who's going to help this Nationals team down the road. Simple as that for me. I like Kyle Finnegan. In fact, I probably like him more than a lot of you out there. But I also think Kyle Finnegan is kind of not what we really want for this future of this franchise. We want a little bit more of a youth movement. And while it kind of seems that Kyle Finnegan is young, the guy's already in his 30s. And yes, the Nationals could be competitive next year. In the second half of the season, they could be. And Kyle Finnegan is a good reliever. And we know with this bullpen, you need good relievers because we don't have many of them. So if that's a decision to keep on to Kyle Finnegan to potentially make a postseason run in 2024 or in 2025, which seems definitely way more likely, but if they do surprise us and they do spend this offseason, then I understand why you keep a Lane Thomas, why you keep a Kyle Finnegan. But even then, my philosophy would be totally different. I'm okay with giving away pieces, but you also have to give me back something that is worth it in return. And a deal has to be met with both sides of the parties. 
Obviously, Mike Rizzo had all those guys on the open market. It's just the teams weren't offering the package that he wanted for either of those guys. And that is why he ultimately decided to hold on to Kyle Finnegan and as well as Lane Thomas. So if that's the route that he really decided to go with, I'm fine with it. But if I do find out that there were decent packages on the table, especially for someone like Kyle Finnegan, who I just don't really think will be a huge part of this future, that is where I'll be upset. And another side, Ildemar Vargas. You could have moved him. I don't really see the point in holding on to a utility third baseman infielder slash outfielder. He's great at that, but you could have gotten something for him at this deadline. I just think differently when it comes to this trade deadline. I look back at the 2021 deadline, I would do the same year in and year out. That's not the most popular opinion, but with Mike Grizzo, and knowing what this guy does best as a general manager for this Washington Nationals team, you got to do better in order to get those prospects. you got to move on from these veteran pieces, whatever it may be. If it's DFA and Corey Dickerson, if it's letting some young guys come up in the majors and let them run around for a bit, I would do that every single September, in which the Nationals, to their credit, they have done in the past. They've done it with Victor Robles coming up early in 2017. They did it with Carter Keyboom coming up in 2019. So it's just an interesting dynamic when you talk about moves like that. But Mike Rizzo decided to stay put. I'll trust him. We'll see where this team goes because the youth movement, it starts now. And the youth movement in particular, it starts at third base. And I think it's going to get real interesting between Jake Alou and another former top prospect. I'll tell you guys about who that is. But before we do that, let me tell you guys about our friends over at Sleeper. And do you think in today's game that Christian Yelich could hit a home run today against Mackenzie Gore? Well, sorry, Nationals fans, I sure do. And on Sleeper, you can swing for the fences with up to 100 times payout. All you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stat categories like home runs, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right and you could win big. What are dynamic payouts? In short, each player projection now has a multiplier attached to it as opposed to preset multipliers based on the number of legs in a contest. With dynamic payouts also comes more stat categories to place contests on and you can get higher payouts than other apps with less picks. Use promo code Locked on, and you'll get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions always apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Now, let's get back into it. As the Nationals, they're gonna have a little bit of a third baseman competition, you could say, over the next few months here as the season's winding down. We're into August, there's only two months left of baseball, and the Nationals. The youth movement at third base starts today. It's really started yesterday with Jake Alou starting over in the hot corner. Let's talk about him first. Later on, we're going to get to former first-round pick Carter Keyboom. Don't give up on the kid just yet, or you can. We'll discuss that a little bit later on, but let's start with Jake Alou. Jake Alou has kind of always been my baby, you could say. I've always seen his numbers, and you see what he has done over the last few years as a 24th-round pick. This guy's been good. This guy's been a good hitter all throughout the minor leagues. And really, you can see the growth post-pandemic as he was drafted or late in the 2010s, came to the Nationals, and kind of flew through the system pretty quickly for a, again, 24th round pick. Since 2021, what he has done has been really impressive at both sides of the play. His He had a 281, 332, a 444 slash in 2021, and then going in 2022, where he was in AA and as well as AAA Rochester, he had a 299 slash, 365, and a 506. That's an 871 OPS. Jake Lou has this track record of being a good hitter. And in fact, over the last two years, if we're really talking about numbers, and again, reaching back in that 2021 bag, there really hasn't been a better offensive player as far as hitting goes, power, getting on base. Jake Alou has been up there as the Nationals' best hitting prospect in a few years now. You could say that. 
At this moment in time, you're looking at Brady House and you're looking at James Wood and a lot of other young guys. But two years ago today, the farm system was looking a lot different than what it is now. And Jake Lou is at the forefront of that offensive progression. He's going to get his opportunity as he should. Because Jake Lou, as we've said, he's been a good hitter. He's been a relatively very good hitter. And if this guy was a fourth round pick, let's say, let's just say that, he would probably be way up higher in these prospect rankings. You would see probably in the mid-teens rather than in the late 20s where he sits now. But Jake Lou has always kind of been that interesting factor. A left-handed hitter at the plate. Jake Lou has always kind of proven that this guy is not just a pushover kind of prospect. He really isn't. But also, how much are you going to trust that this is a real thing? That this isn't just a fluke kind of prospect? Well, you got to give him at-bats in the major leagues. And at this moment in time, as we've said, he just simply hasn't done that much in the majors because he's only played in six games. He's only had 18 at-bats, 18 plate appearances, rather. But in those 18 plate appearances, he's batting 235 as a 513 OPS. Nothing crazy, but you saw in last night's ball game, the guy can hit. And so he's going to be in the fold, and he's going to be the first prospect to get a crack at this. But as we said, there's also another prospect in this scenario that I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about, including myself, to be honest. Carter Kibu, the former first-round pick, who at one point in time was a top-15 prospect in all of baseball. In all of baseball entering the 2020 season, entering the 2019 season. He was a highly thought of big time prospect. But as we know, it did not pan out as soon as he got to the major leagues. In 2020, it was ugly. In 2021, it was uglier. And in 2022, he had Tommy John surgery and missed the entire season. And in this year, he's been rehabbing. And right now, currently, he's down in high A Wilmington, for rehab again as he played in last night's game. Got in that bat, did not get a hit in that ball game. But Carter Keeboom is kind of someone that I want to see more of. Now, while I've kind of been on the record saying that we've seen it from him, we don't really have that high of expectations for Carter Keeboom anymore. It's been years. He had that Tommy John surgery. And while Bryce Harper may make it look easy to come back and return from it, it isn't especially for a third baseman that has to make that throw across the diamond, which is well over 90 feet. I don't know how many feet that throw is, but it's a long throw. Carter Keeboom's going to have to build up his arm, which he has been doing, but he's also got to start hitting once again, because this year his slash line is not that bad. It really isn't. In 2023, so far with three teams in high A, he's played in double A, and he's mostly stayed in triple A. He's got a 261 batting average, a 371 OBP, a 403 slug. That is a 775 OPS. And in AAA, he's got a 425 slug and a 790 OPS in 26 games with them. Carter Keebum has still kind of has that interest factor in which I want to find out if this guy is real or not. Now, if you're comparing both these guys with Jake Alou and as well as Carter Keeboom in this equation, Who would I give the nod to at this moment in time? Let's just say they're both healthy. Let's just say Carter Keebum is healthy in AAA, ready to get called up. Who would I want to see first? It seems unfair, but I would want to see Carter Keeboom in that scenario. Now, that's not the realistic thing because he's been injured. But Carter Keeboom, don't forget about him. Because that is the goal for the rest of this 2023 season. It's the youth movement. It's the youth movement that'll be happening at third base. The youth movement that's been happening at shortstop, at second base, in center field, in left field, whichever position you want to look at, and catcher, starting pitching. That is the Nationals memo going forward. It is the youth movement of 2023. And I want to see guys who necessarily haven't been able to prove themselves at the major league level, especially if you're a former top prospect like a Carter Kibu. I want to see what this guy can do. I want to see what a healthy-ish Carter Keeboom can do. And at this moment, I would expect for him to be a call-up this September at the earliest, or at the latest even. Carter Keeboom, while we forget about him, we also can't forget the fact that this guy was a legit former top prospect in not just the organization, 
in Major League Baseball as well. A first round pick out of high school, a pretty coveted prospect by this organization, a team that refused to trade him multiple times at the trade deadline, a team that they really believed in, a team that they allowed Anthony Rendon to walk for because they said we got Carter Keebum coming up. Don't forget that fact of this. That is why I want to see Carter Keebum was because the promise that he once had, the ability, the defensive ability that he had at third base in the minor leagues, as soon as he came up to the majors, it just seemed like he lost all that leverage. He lost his way to hit. He couldn't hit for power. He couldn't get on base. He struck out a lot. He struggled in the field. But just maybe, just maybe it's a little different this time around. And there's no better time than right now to see that and to find out that factor, whether if Carter Keboom can make that return. And I think that is the interesting part when it comes to this 2023 Nationals group. That is what I'll be looking at going forward. I want to see the young guys get their opportunities and get a fair crack at this thing. Because that is what 2023 is about. That is what it's always been about. That is why you signed Jamer Candelario to that one-year deal to trade him at that deadline. Now, at the same time, Jake Kalou, he's going to get his fair cracks at it, and I'm going to be excited to see it. I always like seeing the young prospects. I like seeing Jake Irvin pitch every five days. I like seeing Jake Alou now being your everyday third baseman. But I don't want to see Ildemaro Vargas. Not because I don't like the guy, but because it's about the youth movement going forward. And that starts with Jake Alou and as well as Carter Keboom, hopefully, down the line. But if Jake Alou takes his spot over the next month, if he's hitting the crap out of the ball, if he's playing a good defensive third base, he's going to get his opportunity and he could probably run with it if those things come into fruition. So you guys can catch the Nationals playing the Brewers today at 105 Eastern time. It's a McKenzie Gore day, and I love a McKenzie Gore day. Catch every pitch in the Nationals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. And now let's get into talking about McKenzie Gore day as we turn the page from the trade deadline. And now let's preview McKenzie Gore day. Mackenzie Gore is on the bump tonight for your Washington Nationals. Not tonight. It's today. It's a day game for your Washington Nationals taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. And again, it's kind of been, we've kind of ignored this series so far as far as the Washington Nationals go because of this trade deadline, because of everything surrounding this team. But now we can finally talk about baseball games because the trade deadline is over with. So, Mackenzie Orr going up against, you know who, the Milwaukee Brewers. Milwaukee Brewers, you have to think every time about that 2019 World Series run. It's a great memory to have, but this ain't going to be a really easy game for this Washington Nationals. They're, They're going up against a lefty Wade Miley on the season. He is a very good starting pitcher for this team, someone who has been incredibly incredibly good so far in this 2023 season in my mind and again 67 and two-thirds innings pitch only 46 strikeouts but a 1-1-5 whip this is going to be a tough matchup for this young national team but in better news we know who hits lefties well because that was a whole talk of town last week when you're talking about the trade deadline lane thomas that is the key factor for tonight's game when you're talking about this Nationals team going up against the Milwaukee Brewers. You also have Kibet Ruiz from the right side of the plate, and it's <clears throat> and as well as Stone Garrett, who could put a dent in this ball game. I think this actually bodes well for the Washington National after losing last night's game, Josiah Gray getting thumped around. There's no better way to really kind of flip the page from that game than having Mackenzie Gore, in my opinion, your future ace on the mound, 24 years old, taking the ball and shoving it down the Milwaukee Brewers' throat. That is what I want to see from this Nationals team today. Turn the corner because we all know this. Jamer Candelario no longer being in this lineup, it's going to hinder this offense quite a bit. Who's going to be the ones to step it up? Who will be the guys to really take advantage of missing a big offensive piece for this Nationals team? Because Lane Thomas, as we always said, He was the guy with the target on this back as far as this Nationals offense goes. Him and J. Mayor Candelario. Now, 
There ain't no Jamar Candelario anymore. Lane Thomas and C.J. Abrams, those are the two guys right now who got to take a step up. And which C.J. Abrams, he has done that and much, much more over the last month. I can guarantee you that. But Lane Thomas, it's only going to get harder from here. It's only going to get harder for him, especially going forward without that protection like a Candelario. Because you're the guy that the manager and the pitching coach, they're all going to be circling your name in this man in this matchup and really any matchup going forward over the next two months. And they're going to say, we got to get Lane Thomas out. We got to get 28 out. And that is how you'll beat the Washington Nationals. Because again, the protection of having J. Mayor Candelario in that three hole, that's no more. And it's going to be tough for this Nationals team to really generate offense in which they have struggled to do this season. Get power. You're losing a guy who has killed the baseball over the summer. Big slugging numbers from Candelario. That's now gone. You're going to need to see step up from Kiebert Ruiz. And as of late, the slumping Lane Thomas, he's going to have to take a step up as well. But going up against the left-handed pitcher today with Wade Miley, I splashed a little cash on Lane Thomas hitting a home run in this beautiful mid-80s degree day here in Washington, D.C. So you guys can catch the Nationals and as well as the Brewers today at 105 Eastern Time. Catch every pitch of the Nationals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Nationals there. It's a great day. Enjoy it. It's not a great day. It's a gore day. I always get those confused, you could say. I'll talk about that in this game a little bit later on tomorrow. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Go Nats.